Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I'm drinking my afternoon coffee and I need it today. I um, got up early this morning. I had to go down to my son's high school. The baseball team every year does a uh, Boston butt sale. And so I had to help wrap the butts and clean the coolers out. I, was cl I had the pressure washer. I was cleaning all these nasty coolers out, getting all that stuff all over me. And it was it was a lot of mess, but but we worked from like seven to eleven this morning, so I was going at it hard. And now I'm having my coffee. I do have a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. It's funny in crypto if you just miss just thirty minutes, so much can happen. There's been a lot of interesting things coming out. I want to show you this. XRP is sticking close to uh, fifty cents been been holding pretty close just been inching 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 up over the last few couple of months um let me show you this I want to show a couple of interesting things now sometimes i run across these things and i'm like what in the world are they saying but this one i liked xrp 1w i don't know what that means possible scenario for v vth wave not fifth wave or second wave or third wave but the vth wave never heard that one Main extension target lies at $9. Now, I, I do speak $9 language. I have no idea what this guy's talking about, but he probably does know what he's talking about. I don't. Even down here, he says, $9 is the 1.618 extension of the blue 1 to 2 and the 0.618 extension of the yellow 3 wave. <laughs> so, this one kind of made me laugh because I had no idea what this guy's talking about. I do know what Crypto Bull's talking about, and I agree. ADA gained 17,000% last bull run without regulatory clarity. I don't see why or how XRP won't be able to do the same after regulatory clarity and reach $20 next bull run. I think that that's, you know, this thing when it's over, I think that I think there's no telling what we're talking about, folks. All right. By the way, speaking of Ripple, Ray Swintes has something to say about what Link 2's up to. Link 2 being one of my sponsors. The link's in the top of the description. Click on it and tell them DAI sent you. Hi everyone, it's Ray Fuentes, Community Director of Link2, the number one platform for private investing. Today, October 14th, Link2 will be offering a $1,000 XRP bonus for all members that invest $10,000 into Ripple Labs, real-time settlement system, currency exchange, and payments network. Just this week, Ripple Labs announced the expansion into two more corridors, bringing on-demand liquidity to France and Sweden. That makes for a total of 25 corridors globally, processing millions of transactions worth billions of dollars. All of these achievements complement recent developments around the SEC versus Ripple case, all which benefit Ripple Labs, such as the motions for summary judgment submitted by both parties and judge Torres accepting two more amicus briefs both supporting ripple ripple plays an instrumental role in modernizing a massive segment within the banking and finance sectors join our members today who've continued to invest aggressively into ripple labs and receive some xrp while you're at it that's all i have for you today have a great day and i'll see you next time ray fuentes is a good guy when i went to apex with ripples apex um out in vegas when i first got there i walked in the door and i told i saw ray and i said ray I'm starving. I hadn't eaten anything. And I want a margarita. There's a Mexican restaurant right before you walk into Apex. So I went over there and I had a couple of margaritas and sat down with Ray and had some cheese dip. <laughs> He's a good guy. Check this out. The stage is being set. New York City WTC. Um, and by the way, you know, this is something I have not done. I've told the story many times on this channel. I won't tell it again, but I told the story about how the uh, original things, how all that happened. And um, I was there. That's a whole story. I won't go into that. But anyway, these are the new ones. Um, check this out. Ripple, step up to the new era of finance. Ripple, crypto means business. Ripple, <laughs> I like that. Crypto means business. Swift isn't fast enough. Move value across borders in an instant with Ripple's crypto solutions for business. Shift your business into carbon neutral. Take a real step towards net zero with a carbon neutral blockchain. That's pretty cool. Right in Jamie Dimon's backyard. Oh, look at this. 
The official cool guy of the digital asset investor has checked in for a Friday and he's all dressed up. Happy Friday. While mostly distracted by World War III, the nuke narrative, we're laser focused on the financial system that's changing right in front of our eyes, a controlled demolition. Trust your gut, follow your instinct, and stick to the plan. Stay patient, baby. It's coming. Oh, I love it. I love how the cool guy keeps his composure. He's not worried about World War III. He's not worried about nukes. I agree with him that all of that's a distraction. Think about the amount of fear that they have tried to put in the population over the last few years. I believe it's intentional. Okay, check this out from Stefan Huber. I'm just going to play it. Listen to this. Uh, Jamie Dimon uh, really continued to beat down on it. He said very recently uh, that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are nothing but a decentralized Ponzi scheme. Yep. So um, let me qualify my statements on this because it's... It, it's uh, I'm an investor in JP Morgan as well. I have a lot of respect for him. He may be one of the most successful banking managers in the history of that sector. However, that was an uninformed statement. And it was not helpful at a time when we're trying to drive regulation through two different bills on the Hill right now. I, I along with many other private investors, have been spending a lot of time in Washington on this. Um, essentially, what Jamie said there, he was talking his book. This is my interpretation. He feels threatened by some of this technology, particularly around payment systems. Because banks make money transferring assets. It's a cost of friction in the system. And one of the only reasons that I invested in Circle, and I'm an investor in Circle, I'm supporting their initiative, and I'm a big believer in what stablecoins can do, is it's time to get rid of that friction. And it's not important that banks be protected so they can make fees from that friction. When you transfer the US dollar into the Swiss franc to buy Nestle on the Zurich exchange, these banks add zero value. There's no value created in ACH transfer fees. If we could use a stable coin that was regulated and approved by both sides of that transaction, it would be more transparent, it would be much faster, it would definitely be more productive, but above all, I would save millions of dollars. And so would everybody else. I can't wait till we can do that because that kind of innovation should be supported. And it is, and that's why we're all here. This isn't about, you know, speculation on asset price. This is about reducing the fees of how the world's economies work. More transparent, more productive, completely auditable, regulated, but less expensive. So does Jamie Dimon feel threatened? You're damn right he does. That's a big part of how he makes money. Too bad. I like it. I like it. Now, you know what that reminds me of? Well, first of all, here's another clip of him saying something similar. Something very important happened last week uh, when Jamie Dimon on the Hill, a manager I have ultimate respect for. I'm an investor in his, his, his company, as, as every fiduciary is. It's a 5% weighting in any index fund. Uh, it, is, it is the best managed financial services company in the world, one can argue. When he actually, there's no better words than to say, took a shit on crypto in front of every legislator, which was a huge disservice, yeah. but also a wake-up call to, to make it blatantly obvious that he was talking his own book. He can't do what you can do, and he knows that. And at some point, he's going to realize that because his clients are going to say, I want to use that service. Right. Maybe in conjunction with what I do with you, yeah. but they're just better at what they do in a payment system. To me, it was a turning point because we're, we're kind of at a low on legislation. I know you're working hard along with others, along with me. There's private investors that go to the Hill. I'm one of them. I mean, when are we going to get some policy on this? Because it, it was a story 36 months ago that everybody understood we had to wait. But now it's, yeah. it's becoming yeah. apparent that we are falling behind as an economy on this. Yeah. And you're one of the guys leading us. So I'm going to reverse roles here for a second. What are you doing to so, now folks some would call this a grand conspiracy but don't forget when they formed the federal reserve a bunch of guys secretly on on separate train cars went down to jekyll island georgia they sat in a room and they were all representatives of the big rich families across the world like the rockefellers jp morgan the freaking um, what are the what are the other names? Rothschilds. They were representatives of all of those wealthy families. They formed the Federal Reserve, and ever since then, you've been living under a monopoly on money because they decided that's what they wanted to do. And then they went to Congress 
and made it look like it was Congress's idea. You didn't hear the story of the people on those train cars for another 10 years. So you can call it grand conspiracy or whatever you want. But you know what the difference this time is? Is we had social media and we had an XRP army and we caught them dead to rights. And it's called Ethgate. And I don't care what any of these clowns say. It's real. Well, this is what Brad Garlinghouse said back in 2017. When we talk about Jamie Dimon, we first have to recognize where he sits. Uh, he sits at the top of the global financial infrastructure. There are a few banks, of which JPM is certainly one, that make billions and billions of dollars of profit by virtue of that perch. You know, 99.9% .9 of banks don't make money in this ecosystem in terms of cross-border payments. Jamie Dimon makes a technical term of a shit ton of money by sitting there. <laughs> so when I hear Jamie Dimon saying he's a fraud, I think to myself, well, of course he's going to say that. He's talking, I mean, and by the way, there's also, you know, people who uh, conspiratorially, uh, that he's trying to talk down the price of Bitcoin so he can, JPM can buy it. Like, the, the idea that... The idea that J.P. Morgan isn't actively working in the blockchain and Bitcoin space is not true. Uh, I mean, I, frankly, I don't mind sharing. There are about 15 senior J.P. Morgan people at Ripple's offices this afternoon. Now, unless J.P. Morgan is going to fire them. <laughs> I, Does J.P. Diamond know that? I, apparently not. Anyway, so look, that's my thought on the whole J.P. Diamond thing. Uh, I do we won't play the rest of that, but I will play this. I'll play part of this anyway. Since we're all crazy grand conspiratorialists. You mentioned Jamie Dimon, so let's bring it back to Jamie and JP Morgan. What do you think is going to be the, the, the thing that they will have to change the most or lose market share and somebody else is going to do better, faster, uh, you know, serve their clients better than JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs? So our company consensus has been um, very prominent since the start of the Ethereum ecosystem. I, I can attest that JP Morgan was there uh, right from the start uh, before uh, public mainnet was, was even launched. Well, I've spent a lot of time over the last couple of years, um, both building the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance and working at JP Morgan on a project called Quorum uh, that was uh, aimed at creating an enterprise-focused but privacy-preserving version of a blockchain. You played such a critical role at JP Morgan, developing its blockchain practice, helping better understand how a traditional bank can embrace this new technology. How do those conversations go in, in, in the product Quorum, which you helped develop at JP Morgan? Can that be applicable to other banks? Absolutely, it's an open source project. It's completely um, an agnostic, industry agnostic as well. So uh, as you indicated, uh, Consensus uh, is announcing today that we are acquiring JP Morgan's Forum Enterprise Ethereum blockchain platform. Um, we additionally uh, will um, see an investment, a strategic investment from JP Morgan uh, and have a seat on the board uh, dedicated to JP Morgan. We'll be working together with JP Morgan to merge the technical roadmaps of our own Hyperledger Basu client, which is a, an Ethereum mainnet compatible client uh, with the Quorum technical roadmap. Uh, and under a commercial agreement, we will be supporting JP Morgan's Interbank Information Network, the IIM, and JPM Coin Network. Um, so we is JPM coin a security? We'll be bringing a much more comprehensive enterprise Ethereum solution to not just JP Morgan and the hundreds of financial institutions on their networks, but the additional hundreds of institutions around the world that make use of enterprise Ethereum and that are increasingly um, starting to make use of public mainnet Ethereum. Uh, JP Morgan, Damon Diamond was famously anti-blockchain and he's come around to developing a project uh, with you. Yeah, he, um, he always applauded the Jamie coin. He was just trying to... Right, just uh, waiting. I'm going to stay here. This blockchain thing isn't going to happen. So what are they using Quorum for? So okay, I think you've seen enough of that. How about this? There's a couple of to, things. To There's mount, a couple of things. You know, with there. respect to, 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 to Mount... See, a lot of people don't know this. But J.P. Morgan was not just there with Ethereum from the beginning. J.P. Morgan was also the one. Of the, they banked Mount Gox, folks. 
it's there, there's not that much here that's all that unique outside of it being uh, Bitcoin related. Um, Bernie Madoff had his company banking at J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan caught on to the. By the way, if I'm not mistaken, Ryan Selkis, who sits to the right of him and who recently, after years of bashing Ripple and XRP, let Brad Garlinghouse dunk him. He's sitting to the right of this guy. And Ryan Selkis, if I'm correct, was at J.P. Morgan before he got into blockchain. Am about a year before it collapsed, they pulled most of their money out of um, uh, out of the, the the Madoff fund. Didn't tell their their own account holders who were also with Madoff that they were doing that. After everything was revealed, uh, the J.P. Morgan account holders who were also who were also with Madoff, they sued J.P. Morgan for violating the fiduciary obligation that J.P. Morgan had to them, and uh, they recovered over $2 billion in that lawsuit. <laughs> now, this is another interesting thing. Listen to what Ryan Selkis says, because if you, if you hear it the way I hear it, it sounds, if I, it sounds almost like he's admitting to trading on inside information, and then he's saying, well, then I, I wrote out a uh, newspaper article about it, but it was after he did it. That's the way I heard this. Maybe I'm wrong. Listen to what he says. J.P. Morgan executives went to jail, right? No. The J.P. Morgan executives went to jail? None of them went to jail. Oh, I, Ryan, we have time. One I, just, I just have to comment really quickly on, on the insider trading thing because I've been very public about uh, my activity around the leak. Um, I did so. So I think he received the leak uh, from a, a leak from Mount Gox my bitcoins and it's because otherwise i personally would have been insolvent he says, better trading thing because i've been very public about uh my activity around the leak um i did sell all my bitcoins and it's because otherwise i personally would have been insolvent uh in the period afterwards i had no idea how long i would be able to uh how long it would be before i could legally uh right so the way i heard it is that he got a tip he sold his bitcoins but then listen to what he does after he sells them is the way I hear it. Again, and act in good faith. Just to clarify in terms of timing, I drafted the statement uh, regarding the leak, uh, sold my Bitcoins, proofread the draft so that I didn't say. He drafted uh, something to put in the newspaper, then sold his Bitcoins. Thing that would put me at legal liability and sent it within a 10 minute window. So 10 minute window after you sold the Bitcoins. <laughs> Um, I've been fully transparent, and uh, I know some... Yeah, you can be transparent after you sell on that information, huh? Okay. Um, and But here is where, here's J.P. Morgan banking Mt. Gox. Chase, an ideal partner for Mt. Gox. Right there. That was from Mt. Gox's website. Check this out, Kim.com. Banks invest your money in the stock market. The law permits that. When stock markets collapse, your money is gone, withdraw most of your cash, and buy physical gold ASAP. You can always exchange gold back to currency. I'm trying to help you. Well, folks, two things here. A, he's right, buy physical gold. I do that, and and my sponsor, Glint, I also put gold, because a Glint account is not your bank account. It's, a, it's its own account. So I buy gold in my Glint account, and that way I've got a MasterCard debit card that I can spend the gold and use it for purchasing power. I could go to the grocery store. If people start bringing wheelbarrows of cash to the grocery store, I could walk in there with my Glint card. How about them apples? The link to this is in the top of the description. Click on the link and tell them DA I sent you. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that it is Friday.